the Greek playwright Aristophanes wrote, Quickly, bring me a beaker of wine so that I may wet my mind and say something clever. Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV. This is the O de V edition. This is day nine of the Costco wine ad round the world box. I keep getting it mixed up from last year. Okay, let's get into the wine. Let's see what we've, oh geez. Let's see what day nine has for us. Here it is. Oh, it was bright and sunny in here this morning. Oh, day nine has fallen down into a previous hole. Oh, that's okay. Might get it out anyway. What do we got? Um, a Merlot from Italy. We've talked about this before, but I'm gonna go over it again. And before I do, I wanna show you the label here. Uh, Trim Vine Merlot, Italy. It evokes an Italian countryside, you know, a popple tree and a house. And a nice label. And I wanted to show you that I've been able to continue to get my labels off uh, my bottles and get them into my book here. So again, uh, I think that's fun, and it's looking nice. There's the uh, Pinotage from yesterday. Uh, the owl's eyes are uh, have spot varnish on it. I just love all the printing and fonts and illustrative work that goes into even these one-off labels here for the Advent box. Now, this bottle and this label uh, being very little, it says extremely little on the front. It says Merlot in Italy. It doesn't say IGT, which is Indicazione Geografica Tipica. So since it doesn't say that, it's not a named wine region. In fact, it's a, um, it's a Merlot from anywhere in Italy. Now, because it says Italy on the bottle, it has to come from Italy. It can't come from uh, a French Merlot and then be bottled and turned into wine in Italy. And, you know, that's actually fairly common. You might come across uh, winemakers in, say, like uh, Ohio, and they import grape juice from California and then they turn it into wine in Ohio. I live in northern Minnesota. We don't grow any grapes up here but there are wineries up the North Shore of Lake Superior, and what are they doing? They're importing grapes from someplace else, and then they're making wine. Now, in France, this is called a négociant, someone who's negotiating for uh, the, the grapes and turning that into the wine, uh, a négociant. A uh, reculant is someone who, uh, reconnoiters their own grapes, they own the land, uh, reculant and négociant, those two words in the French wine industry. And you might see those actually on the label, especially in uh, places where they don't grow their own grapes that much, which would be usually up in Champagne, where you've got these big Champagne houses that make wine. Anyway, back to this guy in Italy. Merlot is a French grape variety. And what happened uh, in Italy about um, 30, 40 years ago is there were some winemakers in the Chianti region, which is in Tuscany, who wanted to start using international varietals. They wanted to use Cabernet Sauvignon, they wanted to use uh, Merlot, they wanted to use Cab Franc, and they wanted to blend these in with Sangiovese, which is the typical or traditional grape that is used to make Chianti. And when they started doing this, the, uh, the wine industry, the, the government even, said, wait a minute, you're not allowed to do that. You can't use these international grape varieties and call it Chianti. So they were like, well, the wine we're making is really good. It's delicious. So I think we should continue to make it. And who cares? A rising tide lifts all ships. 
And they were like, no, look, if you want to use it as Chianti, you want to put Chianti on the label, you have to put Sangiovese as the primary grape and even only grape in many instances in the bottle. So what did the winemakers do? They came up with a new name and they called it a Super Tuscan. Yep, a Super Tuscan is international grape varietals, blended, grown in Tuscany, and then made into a new wine, a new expression, Super Tuscan. And these Super Tuscans are very valuable, highly sought after, and um, well regarded. This, this is not a Super Tuscan. This is a Merlot from Italy. Okay, let's get to the tasting. I filled out the top of my journal here, and I have noted that it's from Italy, and it's Merlot, and it's 12% alcohol, which is interesting. Merlot is usually a big red grape varietal, so uh, I would expect more of a 13% uh, number, but that number, this label is not coming off, this capsule, not coming off good. Okay, got it. That number can vary by one and a half percent. That's the range the winemaker is allowed to be out of precision, I guess, when they test it um, later on. So one and a half percent is quite a lot. That means that this could actually be uh, 14 and a half. Is that right? No, 13 and a half percent or 10 and a half percent. I mean, that's a big range. So um, don't put a lot of stock into that alcohol percentage because the range can vary quite a lot. But it is one of the few things we have to go off of that is per more precise on the label rather than the ad copy. The ad copy often is very, very poor in describing what the wine is actually like. Ooh, this is tight. Uh, if you need a uh, blank wine card, you can follow the link in the description. Okay. Or you can follow the link in the description if you want to buy the journal. You can get that from Amazon. Ten bucks. All right. We have dropped the cork, but I'm going to leave it. Merlot. When I think of Merlot, I think wet forest floor. Mm, you know, earthiness, um, a little bit of damp mustiness. <laughs> I know that probably doesn't sound very good, but that's what I think of. All right, let's take a look at it. I'm going to hold it up over my blank white spot here. I do have a lot of sun in here today, but it kind of keeps going in and out. Uh, I've got a bank of windows next to me. So this is very pretty looking. It's uh, not very deep. I'm going to circle ruby. Okay. Do we get wet forest floor? Let's smell it. Not overly aromatic. It smells clean. It's making my nose itch a little bit. <sighs> I can smell the alcohol. I can smell a little bit of red berries, maybe like a little bit of cherry in there, just slightly. All right, well, I'm just gonna go around the, uh, the ring here uh, citrus, nope. Berries. Well, you know, I'm going to go slight. I just, I'm not getting a big of aroma out of this. Orchard fruit, no. Flowers or tropical, no. Nope. Flowers, no. Nope. Vegetable, no. Nope. Roasted. Not unless I get it from the taste. But at, at this moment, I'm just smelling. So I'm just going to go no. Earthy, no. False, no. Wow, just this. This is just looking completely shut down and closed. Maybe as it warms up a little bit, it become it would become a little bit more aromatic. But at the moment, there's just there's just nothing here. 
Okay, let's give it a taste. There's a little bit of cherry, sour cherry there in the finish. It tastes okay. All right, let's see. Dry or sweet? Sweet. Where's the acidity? Remember, that, look for that watery sensation in your mouth. That's the acidity. Is your mouth watering? Not, not much, but it's slightly watering. Tannins. Tannins are the drying sensation, and they should feel uh, they should feel smooth. It shouldn't be super sandpapery in there. It should be smooth. And this, the tannins here are noticeable. Uh, the alcohol is a slight. I don't get any alcohol burn, so that's good. The body is um, medium bodied. The balance seems to be okay. The complexity, I got a little bit of cherry at the, uh, in the finish. It's not overly complex. It's, a, it's thirst quenching is kind of what it is, but there's not a lot in here, not a lot going on. Uh, complex so I'm gonna go slight and the finish not very long not very unctuous it's not bad it's not great so I'll go slight okay um, that's my flavor profile it's gonna be interesting dots when I round this out and show you because these things are really close together. This thing is uh, quite dull. Okay, uh, appearance, three points, looks nice. Uh, bouquet, one. Taste, one. Finish, one. Impression, zero. Going back to preference, low. Is that harsh? Maybe. Let me do my math and I'll finish up. Okay, here's my final score for our Italian Merlot. It's six points. Now, I know what you're thinking. Whoa, he was super hard on that wine because looking at my little chart here, six is just on the edge of Poor or deficient. I think deficient is actually the proper word here. The wine is boring. It's dull. It's bland. It's thirst quenching, but uh, a glass of water does that. And water is, you know, the key to life. You might think wine is the key to life, but it isn't really. Water is more important than wine. <laughs> So I would like my wine to actually have some character, some zest, some zeal, some freshness that gives me a lift to life, not makes me go, mm. Now, this reminds me of like getting a, a wine by the glass at like, uh, you know, like some place in Iowa. Like there used to be this place in Des Moines called the Farm Shed. I liked eating there, but you know, by the glass wines were not very good. I usually ordered beer because it was better. Sarah would get a glass of wine and of course I would always want to try it. And this is very similar. So this is low quality, boring, bland, well wine, you know, maybe served out of a great big jug. If I was in Italy in the countryside, and this came in a carafe and was included in my price at lunch, then I wouldn't think much about it. I would just drink it and carry on my own merry way. But here I'm being critical and trying to think about the wine, not just to drink it. Here is my wine uh, profile, the flavor profile for this uh, example. And you can see there's not much going on. I mean, the balance is okay, the acidity is okay, but where are the aromas? That is 
80% of tasting is smelling. So not much taste here. All right. That's all I've got for you today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Day 10 is coming up next. And until then, I say a tutelaire and cheers. Hi. Ooh, Merlot. Well, I will say Dave said come down, so I did, and then I saw him doing this. So that's a bad sign. Smell is okay. I mean, maybe a little bit of cherries or blackberries or something. Color's pretty. Let me give it a sniff. I mean a taste. It's a little thin. I hope for Merlot to be like a wet rainforest and this is thinner than that. Taste disappears fairly quickly, although the tannins linger. as ah, a little bit of heartburn, but it doesn't taste terrible. It's okay, I guess. I'm not going to give it a thumbs down. I'm not that harsh. <laughs>